Okay, so as we discussed in the last class, let's go with the practical session for today. So I hope everyone received the uh, last session recording. If anyone missed out, guys, please share your details. So we'll I'll share you both the recordings, today's recording and the last session recordings. Okay. Today we'll see some uh, practical what we discussed in the last class, the process. Okay. So, so guys who missed out in the last session was not attended, please share your details so that I can uh, share this today's recording and the last recording as well. Okay, all right. Okay, this is what we discussed in the last class. Okay, so what we'll do, okay, all right, so. So yesterday I just explained the process, like uh, what actually we do in real time. So what are the process, like uh, from source to target, how we are going to implement, how we are going to implement. So basic, we have seen in the last class. So today I'll just show you the practically, how we are going to implement in real time. Okay, the same project, whatever we discuss the application, we have one supermarket application from there we get a data. And from there, we process our data to the by using some ETL tools. From there, we extract the data with the different formats, whatever the data it is there. And we process the data to the data warehouse. From there, we have a, some data marts. It is easy to access the data where you go historical data to access. So to access the huge volume of data and you're trying to query from the reporting side, it is very difficult. Okay, as a Power BI or whatever, whoever the report developer, they try to access the data from the data warehouse. It takes a lot of time. It takes more time because the moment user will come and they'll open the report, what happened, the back end, what is you are doing it? SQL query. The moment he opens the report, it writes the data, it's go and run the query. 
and in response you will get some result so we required quick reporting not only just sharing the format of data also we need to make sure that how quickly we can provide the result okay that is the reason as etl developer what we required we need to provide them a summary data just remember that business team never go transaction wise analysis they always look high level informations as i told you in the last class weekly data yearly data product wise sales location wise sales country wise sales so this is a high level information this is that is the reason we required high level reporting okay so before going to that let's understand let's understand why we require to dump the data okay we are dumping the data okay we are loading the data into the data warehouse what is the reason if you have a data in the files why can't you analyze the data in the file let's example i'll give you one basic example i hope everyone able to see my complete screen so if anyone having any issue with my voice please let me know okay if you understand this one see there is a practice data if you see here there is some records there is some data we have so this data let's take i'll put it in the notepad plus plus let's understand the basic process then i'll take you to the azure portal okay so what i want to do here is there is a, some country wise data we have so this country wise data what i want to do here is we want to analyze the data the employee data what is the salary the addresses the country wise location wise or addresses wise we want to know how many each country belongs to how many employees are there and what is the total salary okay by seeing this okay if you want to get only uh, uk data i can i can easily go and figure out wherever uk is it i'll go and figure out that if they want india region data i'll go and i'll select wherever the india region is there i'll go and I'll collect the data but why you are loading the data in the database they even know why we are loading the data why can't we analyze the data directly from the file so as per our this process i am telling you guys that we are going to load the data in the database why we are going to load the data in the database why can't you analyze the same data here what is the purpose of loading the data in the database anyone so we can uh, so call by column names easily you know so we have column names here employee id employee name employee salary address is there yeah uh, but some relationships sir if, we, if there is any other table then we cannot have not required on another table just let me know for this only one table and later we go to mm. the complex why can't okay. we just for this data only why we are loading it what is the purpose later we'll see in case of multiple tables joins and all we'll do that later but if you want to analyze this data can we do i am from bpo background i am a ms background i'll take this data i'll put into the excel format i'll same data i'll put it in the excel format whatever data you want to do analysis i'll do it i'll i'll put it good at in excel so i'll make it pivot table so you want to take analysis addresses wise country wise you want to see some of salary and there whatever the revenue is there i want to see i can do it easily here why you going for all these things if it is a simple data then we can have it in a, you know if it is a huge amount of large amount of data so then it would be better to have a database yes that is a problem here so excel also max to max you are copying the data in the excel also max to max 10 lakhs record you can store if you put it 5 lakhs and you applying some pivot and all it completely your system will gone so for huge volume of data it is not possible easily so every day it is not a one time requirement it is not a one time requirement you can ask me directly sir i know sql server i can directly go to the sql server i can dump there also that is again a one time requirement so we want every day not only just structured data every day we get a different format uk is getting 
in JSON format. India is getting in the database. Other countries getting in the other format. So all this format, we are converting them, we are transforming them and proper making in the decision format. And then we are processing this data to the data warehouse or database. Then further, whatever the, once you get it all country data, like a repository in one centralized place, one centralized place, in that you are doing on top of that analysis. So that is the reason we required ETL developer to extract all wherever format is there, transform them, then make it in a decision format data. Further, once you have on daily basis, it is not like one time requirement. I told you, once we open the store and we close till 9 p.m., it will be, and then we are scheduling at 10 p.m. The job every day, we take the data and extract the data and load the data. In case of any kind of failures, you need, you are the responsible, you have to fix it. Sometimes you might get bad records or other records, data conversation. This is what we need to do. We need to fix it. And we need to help the reporting developer in quick format analysis. So that is what there is a more demanded than the reporting developers. So this same practically you want to do, we required one Azure account. So same infra infrastructure, same picture you want to implement you need to get it first requirement, whatever the tools you require when you're going to the cloud. So I know to develop this requirement, I just required some tools. So before going to these tools, what we are going to do, we need to understand what is Azure account. In Azure account, there are three types of accounts we have. One is free account. Because to start this project, you just required one account, one internet, one system, I told you last class. So first we required account. Free account is Microsoft giving you 200 USD dollars, around 1,600, 17,000 credit in IRR. So you cannot withdraw that amount. Microsoft giving you, why they are giving you? To purchase some kind of services, some kind of software over online. If I go here, I log into the portal. So there is a azure.com is there to go and create account. Once you create the account, your entire development will be portal.azure.com. This is a place where you're going to develop your requirements. So this is the place where you're going to develop on daily basis requirement. So what we are going to do, let's first visit to the azure.com, then we'll go with the subscription. So there is one more subscription, is there student subscription. So the question here is, sir, why they are giving you 200 USD dollar? What is the use of this? If you go Flipkart, Amazon, if you want to purchase product, did Microsoft, or sorry, did uh, Amazon or Flipkart, they give you money to purchase product? No, right? So there, whatever you want to purchase product, you need to pay from your pocket. So their market strategy is something for new users, for new users only. They are giving you 200 USD dollars in Indian currency, almost 13,000 or sorry, 15 or 16,000 rupees. And that will be like a one month subscription, one month, 30 days. After that, what to do, sir? Go ahead, new, create new email ID, practice it. So same way for student account, they are giving you 100 USD dollars. But the problem here is some trick is there. What is that? I'll tell you in the regular classes. And the company which uses pay as you go. Pay as you go. You can understand by pay as you go. That means how much you want to use, how much you are using it, you need to pay for that. We are not asking anything. How much you're going to run, how much you're going to perform, you have to pay the amount. That is pay as you go subscription. That is monthly billing. Like how we have Amazon, Flipkart, sorry, the Amazon, Netflix, on monthly basis, you take a subscription. So how much time you uh, pay the amount, those many channels only you can able to see. The subscription, same way here also, there is a monthly subscription, there is yearly wise subscription or further, or pay as you go. How much you want to use, pay that amount only. That is the subscriptions. So, to create this, we need to go to the azure.com and to work with this, we need to go to the portal.azure.com. So let me show you the portal now. 
So here, let's go to the azure.com. So there is no other place, guys. This is common for company, for you or other platform, other users. Same, no change in the infrastructure. So you can get it for free. You can try for free and which give you some 200 USD dollars, which for free, you can use, there are two subscription. I told you Azure for free, pay as you go. That is a premium account, subscription based. So if you are practicing, always go with free. If you are pay as you go, you have to pay monthly billing from your pocket. Microsoft will not help you. Whatever you are using, company people they use, pay as you go. We are using pay as you go. From our institute, we are paying pay as you go. Okay. Our institute take care about the billing. So, but you people have to work with or practice with pay as you go. I don't know Power BI people are they use some domain IDs. If I'm not wrong, come uh, institute is providing some domain IDs for them. But in this case, there is no domain ID. We just require free account to be created and start working on that. Okay, once it is done, what you get in the free account? Can you go and check? Click on that. Let's see. Let me show you that. Okay, it is taking me to the creation. No problem. So if you see here in the sorry. Okay, so what we'll do? Let me go to the portal directly. Portal.azure.com. Okay, we'll see one by one creation part. Installation, everything I'll show you. Don't worry, guys. So I'm logging to the portal.azure.com. Now here, very important. So whatever you're doing it, you first need to understand what is the requirement? What is the need? What they want? Without understanding their needs, without understanding their requirement, there is no use of just going and creating a service. Don't do that. If you understand what their requirement is, what they are planning or what they are want in the end result, understand first requirement. Not only this process, not only in Azure, anything. In terms of reporting also, in terms of query also, writing query also, you first need to understand what you want, what you want the result, what you want to display in the report. So that is your requirement. Here also, when you are developing something, you need to understand what is my requirement. What do you want? I want storage. I want database. Then further, whatever I want to do, I'll do it. But basic requirement is I want storage account. I want database account. So can I create database, SQL database? So here I want to create SQL database. So I don't know if people know or don't know if you people have been ever installed SQL Server, there are some process, right? There are some process that we have. We go through this many steps. If I am not wrong. So you people installed. If you go to this MSV, sorry, the installation process, you require installation, different versions of SQL Server. You will go to the setup file. You will do some installation process, right? These are the installation process for to create your SQL Server or to install your SQL Server. This is a process which you do. This many steps, you have to make sure that everything is properly done. Otherwise, it will not get installed. Where you are installing end of the day, you are installing with all the of passwords and all with other features in C drive. If your C drive is full with other things, what happened? Your SQL server will not work, will not function. So anyone, anyone know that where we store the data in SQL server? Anyone come across where we store the data in SQL Server? In the tables? We create databases and then tables. Tables, correct. Where actually store the data? I mean, in the backend? 
you are creating table okay well and good so we store in a form of rows and columns that is okay we create database that is okay back end where it is store database c drive c drive okay mdf correct rashmi so there are back end, there are files are there back end mdf and ldf files are there so there are some ldf ndf master file log data file which take your complete database that we call database files in that we have different operations we get stable so we are acting like we are storing in the tables yes no doubt rows and columns correct no issues database database under database you have a tables no doubt under that back end if you observe there is a ldf and mdf file will be there so that occupy that occupy your c drive space so once your c drive is full that will not make functional so that is what now it is very flexible in azure so you want database i'll go to the database let's see here how to create that so we'll create no project in one hour i'll create the entire project let's see here so i'm creating here very simple i'll not go this all installation steps in an easy way i'll do this create database basic things you need to understand what that basic things i'll explain you in the regular class okay don't worry so this is my project name what is my project name let's suppose vinay tech project in this project so i am creating the customer database in which server database will be stored under one server right click on create server very simple i am creating in a tech equal server i am just filling like a form what i require so physically this is a data center i told you physically our sql server where install in c drive here where you are going to install depend upon my project where my project is holding in which country we are working it for which pro which country we are working for them so in that location in that region wherever i feel i don't save wherever i feel i don't select if i i'm from india i'm not going to select india your project your manager where you he ask you to save so you have to select that physical data center so my manager ask me to save the data in the east us location this is the data center where your physically back end installing your sql server so here we are physically installing the data center in the next when you want to meet with your microsoft team you can go and visit to this data center and you can see how sla they are maintaining it service level agreement what they mention in the service level agreement they are maintaining properly with the backups and or not so you can visit also okay so you can go to this data center and you can have sla and you can meet or how they are maintaining it how they are using it whether they are properly using in a proper way or not this all we can see we don't require separate dba team to every day take a backups every day to work okay so just you need to give a user id and password because you are saving in the cloud so i'll give my uh, let's go with admin this is uh, admin user okay so i'll make it separately in notepad so that i'll remember my username is okay let's go with username easy to remember i'll give server name only as username okay to easily remember username is my server name to easily remember right so later you can change it whatever you want see here done now i'll just click okay that's it just one pop now we making a ready so what is your development of production server just configuration will change configuration will change right what is the configuration let's see here very simple so it is about the pricing so you want basic 1 gb of disk 
I'll go with one GB of disk. If you want two GB, you can increase two GB. It's up to you. Today, my business is not that capable. So I'll go with basic configurations now. If my business grow, I'll get every day more transactions. Whenever I require, I'll increase the space. But do you increase that is possible in our infrastructure? It is not possible easily here. Yes, it is possible. I'm not saying not possible. It is possible, but there are many things are there. There are many things are there. The in, many things are nothing but you are, whether that system will capable to take the further more GBs of data or not, infrastructure will support or not. In case if it is not supported, there is a chance of performance lagging issues. So that is the reason whenever required is a scale in and scale down. If two GB is not sufficient, I'll go with high GBs. If it is you want 10 GB, 20 GB, 30 GB, whenever you require, you increase it or decrease it. This is also not sufficient. I'll go high configurations. And this is also not sufficient up to 7 GB or 700. I'll go with high configurations. So high business configurations. So whatever you want, you can go and perform scale in and scale down. It is flexible. Okay. I'll show you how it get, how it going to change. I'm just selecting for 1 GB right now. Later, I'll change it. So this is estimated cost. This is not directly will detect from your amount. Okay. The 200 Microsoft giving you 200 USD dollars. Under 200 USD dollars, they will charge from that. So this is estimated per month. We are not working with per month. They immediately once practice is done, we'll close it. So this will charge in some rupees, rupees, okay? Not even hundreds. So that is flexible here. Then one GB we selected. Can we go the backup? We don't require DBA team to take my backup data. Every day they do the redundancy. Okay. Just review and create. Just review everything is correct. Create. That's it. It starts deploying it. It oh, starts. Oh, for OLEP, OLTP and OLEP. So both uh, the same process, right? The same yeah. database. Complete Azure is same process. No change oh. process. Oh. Complete Azure is the same process. You want to create storage account let's create a storage account so i'll create so let it be so parallel you can work do you do you install parallel in your on premises no we cannot install parallel in on premises if i am installing sql server i cannot install the other software because your ram your cpu will not help you now i can do here very simple so it is getting deployed who is getting deployed how it is getting deployed back end somebody is working on behalf of you there is a, some scripts are there Based on that, it is deploying. If success fail, that is not my headache. I just need to understand what is the issue, whether it is my technical issue or other issue. Okay, so it is getting deployed. Let it get deployed. So you can see it is getting deployed. Only notification, you no need to do anything. Even in non-premises, in your system, what you do in case of it got failed because of some softwares are not updated, your system is not updated, a .NET framework is required. You don't require anything. Okay, let's go with other storage. What we want next? We want files. From where we get a files? From storage account. Same like Google Drive. How are you creating Google Drive? Same way I'll create storage account. Click on storage account. Create. Very simple. Just fill like a form again. Complete Azure. I want storage account in the same project, Vinetech project. My storage account name is Azure Storage Account. Where I want to deploy, same location. I don't need to change my deployment location. Backup, local redundancy backup. Just review and create. Okay, the deployment got started for creation of a storage account also. I'll click on create. Parallelly, I can work. Here also I'm working. Here also it is working. And parallelly, again, one more tab I'll create. Data factory. Can we create an important tool? An important tool? Data factory. Okay. Let's create data factory also. Parallelly, I'm working in the three tabs. You don't require any installation here. Data factory. Can I create? If I don't know, I'll go and search here. Whatever you want inbuilt, everything will get populated through search box you want to create same feel like a form 
here in the same project i want to create my data factory name is test adf some new and location same location version 2 default review and create so don't worry about other tabs i'm going to explain in regular classes okay it is again getting deployment. Three things are parallelly running. So can I we go one by one? Let's see here whether it is installed. Yes, it is deployed. Can we go to the resource? Resource is nothing but yours. The one which you installed. That is we call resource or service. The service is nothing but database service. Is one of the service, database service or resource you can call. We don't call software here. That is not good terminology in Azure. In place of software, we call service or in place of software, we call resources or components. Okay. That is it. Here, my database name and my server name, database name. How much GB or how much GB is occupied? Can we see in the monitor tab? It is occupied some zero point something. And how much remaining? How much allocated? Maximum GB you can store. Immediately you got more transactions. My packages are getting filled because of space is not there. Immediately I'll go and I'll go to the settings and change it. Storage. How much GB you want? 10 GB, 15 GB, increase it. Very simple. Automatically scale in and scale down. Now we have 1 GB. I want to increase more 1 GB. Yes, increase that. Click apply. Can you do same thing in your infrastructure? Not possible. I required my manager approval. I required IT team approval. IT team have a manager. He will approve. He will go with the cost analysis. He will take separate drives. Lot of things are there. Till that, my all reports, my all data will be on hold. Can you see here now again, go to the monitor tab. Is it increased 2 GB or not? 2 GB is increased. Do you want to decrease again? Go and decrease it. It's up to you. Scale in and scale down. Okay. So, anyone know to work with SQL commands, which platform we use to connect to the database, which platform we use? Data factory is also created. Let's see. So, to write a query, which platform we use in on premises? To connect to the databases, how you going to connect, which tool you use. So there are different services are there, blob service, storage is there. SSMS, correct, SSMS. So SQL Server Management Studio. There is a SQL Server Management Studio. You can, this is a platform to connect to the databases. Sir, I don't know, I didn't install this, no problem. You not install, will work in the cloud only. If you are flexible, you want to work that cloud also in your local go ahead and create here also how to connect i'll show you now see so i'll create one folder that we call as container i'm saying that this is my data logs or files data logs or files in that do you want to upload your documents images files whatever you want to upload upload it now this is your drive you want to save, save it, browse. How you how you upload in the drives? Same way we'll upload in the drives. So here I have a practice data, some data, I'll upload it here. Do you want to share with someone? I'll share with someone, I'll give access to him. I can easily give access to that person and provide this data. This is the data. Now this data, I'm going to load in the database. So database is, this is the one, which we just increased to till 2 GB. Okay, let's see here how to connect. So don't worry, what is this all I'll tell you because to connect, I'm just giving access. Now see here, coming back, my server name is, this is my server name. You can see a server name copy that server name, copy the clipboard, 
come back to the management studio did it install open or not it is not open no problem sir i want to connect in the cloud only there is a query editor click on query editor just a oh, user id already there do you want a password provide a password that's it and you know how to create a table i told you basic is required you want to create a table create a table some uh, customer data or customer information or employee information employee information and the employee id employee name employee salary employee country the country Done. I'll execute. You want new query window? I'll open new query window. One more window where you can see if the data is there in employee information. No data. Can we connect same thing in my SSMS? I'll go to my SSMS. What is my server name? This is my server name, username as a server name, password. This is SSMS. This is a platform. Don't worry, guys. I'll help you with this platform also. How to connect? This is a connect option. Connect to the database. And we are connecting to the Azure database. The question you will get here, sir, how you are connecting to this database? It is a cloud. It is installed in cloud. How you are connecting in the local? Okay. The customer database we created. I just created, if you remember, I just created one table in cloud. What is that table? employee information table without any data can we see that taking time okay no problem so employee information okay can we see the data right click and get the data top 100 records 2000 records no data right now okay so what we did, we performed storage account ready, file is uploaded, data factory is ready, database is ready, and table is also created. Now what we need to do, we need to extract this file, we need to load this file. Now see here, let's see. So no data, can we load the data into this table? Let's see here now. Data factory, where is the data factory here? It is also deployed, let's launch it. Now, this is your development tool, again in the portal only. So this is very, very important tool. If you know this tool, that's more enough. Only three tabs you need to understand. In Data Factory, there is only three tabs. If you understand thoroughly the three tabs, a lot of requirements are there. So you no need to install anything in on-premises. Okay, only three tabs you need to understand. One is development. One is develop, whatever you develop for that you need to schedule. And whatever you develop, that is through connection. Only three tabs, no further tabs. This is something called learning center. Okay, all your YouTube or other documents, all you will have here. So this is the main important development pipelines development cdc power query data flow so what our requirement is our requirement is to get the data so now i'll show you what is the use of this data factory so when you see here there are a lot of lot of connections are there there are many connections wherever the data is there you can extract not only this one there are many connections are there wherever your data in sap or Oracle. Uh, other Salesforce or DBA, MySQL, Mongo, Maria, wherever the data is there, cloud application, API REST application, wherever your data is there, you can extract by using the data factory. That is the advantage. So earlier, the Microsoft product, I told you this earlier, Microsoft product is SSIS. Anyone know how, what is a previous product of uh, Power BI, how this Power BI was developed on which product? Anyone here Power BI developer or in Power BI learning person? How Power BI developed on which 
on top of which tool it was worked especially it's a uh, uh, generally uh, it, there are excel reporting tools at uh, ssis yes. and, ah. and uh, so on and, you know the excel files also you know gives a lot of related uh, stuff okay so this power bi is developed on top of ssrs so same way data factory is developed on tool called ssis so SSRS is a tool. I don't know if people heard or not. There's MSBI concept. There is MSBI requirement was there. MSBI is one of the force which company is still hiring a lot of requirement on this one. So same, they replaced, Microsoft is replaced with Azure BI for data engineer process. So MSBI have three stacks, SSIS, RS. There's more two important stacks. Same way, on top of these are on-premises tools. So Microsoft release the tool called Power BI for SSRS, for sorry, SSRS. And for SSIS, Microsoft released the data factory. If you know these tools, almost you covered it. That is what people who know MSBI, they can easily work here. And people who know Azure BI, they can easily work. Both easily we can work. So in SSIS, what is the problem in this SSIS means you don't have the challenges for semi-structured data or unstructured data or other connections. That is the reason what we do, we take the help in case you want JSON data, XML data or raw data or API REST data. We go with the help of third party companies. Then Microsoft come across this in the data factory concept, all connections he was given all connections he was given, easy to access, manage, even though you don't know those many connections. But same thing if you go, people who are know the programming, data bricks, Python scalar, they have to write everything in code. We don't require code, all connections are ready. What you want, just search here. Just go and search here. You want blob storage, blob storage. You want SQL storage, there's a SQL storage. There's Oracle you want, go with Oracle. Data lake, you can go with data lake. So just need to, again here, you need to configure. You need to fill like a form here also. So this is my link service. Where is my, my uh, the account name, subscription name, account name is Azure storage account. That's it, test the connection. If it is green and it means ready to go, create. One connection is ready. And where we want to load? in one more connection is required, SQL connection. Whether the SQL is Amazon Redshift or SQL or on-premises or normal Azure SQL database, Azure SQL database. This is my another link service. And I want to go through user ID and password, subscription, what is your server name, Vinetex SQL server, right? What is your database name? There's a customer or employee something database is there. And in that, my username is Vinetex SQL Server user. Password, there is a password. Simply you need to get this information and test the connection. Click OK. Your two connections are ready. Now we'll develop the data flow. Can we go and create? So I'll just take, these are activities, very, very important activities, okay? We're going to discuss all these activities. So my pipeline is about to load the data from the blob storage to Azure SQL database. There is a pipeline. So this copy data activity, which copy the data from the blob storage to Azure SQL database in the tables. What this is required, again, configurations. What is a source? What is a source? Let's suppose my source is blob storage. Already connections is ready. What format of data you want to get? What is the format of your data? Can you see? What is that format? CSV. Can we have CSV? CSV. If it is a JSON, select the JSON. If it is a raw data, Select the XML data, parquet data, binary format, unstructured, semi-structured, whatever is there, just click and continue. 
and this is my source. This is my source data set. Connection is already ready. Can we browse it? There is a data logs. Do you see any data logs here? There is a data logs. Under that, there is a file. Can we select? There is a folder. No folder. Direct file is there. Click OK. That's it. Can you preview the data? Don't worry. Each and every component, I'll explain you in detail, guys. Right now, to just to show you that picture, I'm completing this task. In regular classes, we are going to discuss detail level with each component, with each tab. What is prefix? What is wildcard? What is list of file? What is the start time, end time? Everything we'll discuss in detail in regular classes. Because in one hour class, I cannot complete all these topics. So I just need to tell you how it is easy process. What is a method, how we are developing? This is all I'm showing you in these two class demos, okay? So in regular classes, one month class or two months classes, everything we're going to do. Okay. Now target, where you want to load? I want to load in the table. So I'll select the SQL table. There's a SQL database. Already I'm having a table, the table here connection, which table it is, how many tables are the only one table, employee information table. Okay. That's it. Mappings. Do you have any mappings? Map it. If not, leave it. See here is not matching. Why not matching? We are getting address. My table is having country column. Rest everything is mapping. Only this column is not matching. So manual map it. Done. Validate. No issues. Let's start the package. Execute. Okay, done. What is showing? It's completed. Can we see whether it's completed or not? You can see the picture here. If you don't understand input and output, what we are doing it? What we are doing it? We are just extracting the data. One file is read, 30 record is processed, 30 record is written, some duration, some charges is all we have. Okay, can we go and cross check once in my on premises? 30 record is processed. Can we go and check in the cloud also, whether in the query editor is right now empty, can I run here? Data is there. Can we implement same picture? Can we implement the summary data? Because we want to implement the summary data. Can we implement in query? Yes, there is a everyday data is there. We can easily write a query. What you want? We want country wise, We want counts of this employee IDs as counts. And we don't require names. Let's remove this name part. We want sum of salaries as so salaries by counts. Okay. Okay. That's it. Anything is missing, comma is missing, and group is missing. Done. Data is ready. Can we see same picture? It is how easy it is there in SQL. How easy is there in SQL? Same counts or not? Same data or not? And I can do some whatever I want to do. You want reporting? I'll do the reporting. You want graph to be applied? I'll insert some graphs. What sort of graph you want? Pie chart, line chart whatever you want on top of that, I'll do it. Can we do this one? We require Power BI developer for this. Okay, you want to schedule it, I'll schedule it. You want Power BI, we'll develop in the Power BI also. Do we have Power BI desktop? Let's see, do you have Power BI? It is installed in my this desktop or not, no problem. So same picture, can we discuss? I'll show you. Okay, in other system, I'll show you how to connect to the Power BI. Let me share my other screen. 
So I hope everyone able to see this window. Okay, this is the Power BI desktop. It is in the other screen, okay? So what you want to do, you want to design some report. Okay, from where you want to design? This one. Where is your data? Data is in the Azure. What sort of data it is? Azure SQL database. Can we connect in the Power BI? Okay, connect. What is your server name? Do you know what is your server name? Yes, I know my server name. Where is my server name? Let's go to the portal. Let's go to the portal. Portal.azure.com. This is my other system, guys. Okay. So here I just created one server. This is my server. My server name. I want to design because the data is here. Server name. Do you have database name? If I see, click OK. No, no problem. Later also you can configure. This is my server. I have a customer database. How many tables are there in customer database? We have employee data. So can we load this data? See guys, I'm saying loading means it is not mean that you are load in some way. You are loading for your reporting within the Power BI, okay? Now when we are loading, to just show you the graph, we are loading. How we load in Excel? The same way we are loading in the Power BI desktop. To just present the graph, ready to use that graph. Done. I got a table, same way how you got in Excel. I want to display some pie chart or line chart, whatever chart you want to take, take it. Display the data, country-wise or country-wise sum of revenue you want to show or you want a pie chart to be displayed. However, you want to design your dashboard, design the dashboard. Do we require separate things here? You want employee ID-wise, I want to see the countries where it is divided. Now, how many records are there? You can see here, 33% is covered. Here, how many records are there? Seven records. So what I'll do now, I'll come back I'll come back to the other desktop and you see here and you see here I'm going to load again what will happen if I somebody my colleague started loading here he don't know he morning you started again he came in the afternoon he started the process what will happen in this case 30 record already loaded Again, 30 record will get loaded in your table. So that means the data duplication will happen, right? Let me show you. Already 30 record is there in my table. Already 30 records are there in my table. If I again start by mistake, what will happen? If I go and run query, what happened? Data duplication. Can we come back to the Power BI? Yes. Let's see here. So earlier, how many record was there? Some 10 records. For here, five, seven records. Here, five records. Can I refresh? Client will just refresh this button. He don't know what to do. He will refresh the button. Can you see now? 20 records, 14 records, 10 records. So this is a problem. Revenue got increased, doubled. So how to handle it? Did it? Did Power BI will handle this case? Will Power BI fix this issue? Will reporting will fix this issue? They already developed it. Nothing to do here with the, with the reporting tools. Nothing to do with the graphs. It has to fix in the data level. So that data analysis we will be going to do. That is what we have called data analyst or data engineers. We're going to work on this data. Either you do the duplication deletion or to apply some logic in your data factory. What logic? Before loading anyone, 
before loading anyone, what I want to do, I want to delete first whatever my data is there before loading anyone without knowing me. First, get the data, delete the data, and you execute now. So you run 100 times also. Today, data is 30 records. It will not change any 30 records in your target table. So that loading process we have, we have loading templates we call. In our regular curriculum activity, we have some loading techniques. So we call as loading techniques. So there are full load, delta load, incremental load, regular load. Without this, we cannot develop our ETL flow. The one earlier which we developed is regular process. Now I am implementing the full load process, deleting the entire data and reprocessing it. So now my data will be available only 30 records. Okay. If I go and again I run it, so it will come into the original position back to this original data. Now I will ask to the Power BI or whoever client is using that reportings. I'm going to tell that now please go and refresh. We have fixed at back end. They will refresh. Just click on refresh. They will get it done with the original data. Can you see now? Seven, five, ten. So we are not going to do any reporting tool here. I'm just explaining how we are going to fix from backend. Okay. Got it. So this is what the process we do in the data factory. So there are many activities are there. All activities we're going to cover, which I explained in your uh, course content, go through that course content, loading process, the trigger, scheduling. This is manual. We are doing it. We don't do manual. We schedule it. Every day, we're going to schedule it. There are different type of scheduling process we have daily, weekly, monthly, or high hourly, monthly basis, daily basis, whatever you want, you can schedule it. And trigger also, there are different type of trigger. Scheduling is different type of scheduling. Sometimes file will not come. Client will Client will upload the file wherever he want. Wherever he get free time, he will upload. But we cannot wait for his free time, right? So those everything we can use the storage events based triggers and other events. Okay. So got it. So how we are implementing this process? We just extracted from the storage account the CSV file. We extracted. We make it transform, and then we are loading it. And that data we are analyzing the Power BI. And then through Power BI services, we can deploy the wherever the forward you want, you deploy it. All right. Any questions, any doubts quickly here? Yeah? 